The Consoling Thoughts of St. Francis de Sales Consoling Thoughts on Trials of an Interior Life, Infirmities of Soul and Body, etc. Chapter 25 The Best Crosses Let us, I pray, slightly unmask an error that is found in the minds of many, who do not value or wish to carry the crosses that are presented to them unless they are rough and heavy. For example, a religious will willingly submit to practice great austerities, to fast, to wear the hair cloth, to take severe disciplines, and he will have a repugnance to obey when commanded not to fast, or even to take some rest, and such other things, in which he seems to have more satisfaction than pain. Now, you deceive yourself if you imagine that there is less virtue in overcoming yourself in these things than in things more difficult, for the merit of the cross does not lie in its weight, but in the manner of carrying it. I will go further and say that there is sometimes more merit in carrying a cross of straw than a very heavy one because the lighter the crosses are and the more contemptible, the less conformable are they to our inclinations, which always look to show. And it is a thing most certain that there is always more virtue in not saying a word that has been forbidden us by our superiors, or even in not raising our eyes to look upon something which we are very anxious to see, and the like, that in wearing the hair cloth, because when we have put this on our back, there is no need of thinking any more about it. But in these petty practices, we must have a continual attention over ourselves to guard against falling into imperfection. Now, then, you see very well that the word of our Lord which orders you to take up your cross, ought to be understood of receiving readily and indifferently all the obediences that are given you and all the mortifications and contradictions that you meet with, though they should be light and of little importance, assured as you ought to be, that the merit of the cross does not lie in its weight, but in the perfection with which it is carried. Truly, it is good to mortify one's flesh, but it is especially necessary to purify our affections and to renovate our hearts. God says to us, Rend and tear your hearts, for it is against them my anger is provoked. This is what we do by these little mortifications, frequently repeated and faithfully practiced, to suffer a little rebuke in a spirit of meekness, to set through obedience when we feel much repugnance in doing so, not to complain when we imagine there is great reason why we should, to endure the defects of those with whom we live. It is on these occasions that we must rend our hearts and make a continual sacrifice of our own wills, our natural inclinations, and give some proofs to God of our love and our fidelity. Note. God has the goodness to put some of our purgatory into each day. Let us accept, embrace the cross, which is presented to us. Let us take care not to complain, nor to imagine that suffering is a new invention. A person might easily suppose it was, on seeing our astonishment and hearing our murmurs, the saints, crushed and ground down by trials of all sorts, seized on suffering as gold from the mine. See how the gold taken from the earth is cast into a crucible. Had the gold thought and speech, it would cry out, I suffer, take me out of this. And yet this gold is purified, and soon it will shine on the brows of kings and on the altars of the living God. The cross affects the same in our regard. It is our crucible. That note was a quote from P. de Revignon. Back to the text. O oh God, 
you will tell me, This is a great renunciation, and it is necessary to be very attentive over oneself, not to follow one's own will, and not to seek that which our self-love desires. For it has many artifices to deceive us, and to turn our attention off ourselves. That is true, but there is a remedy. Remember that our Lord directs us to take up our cross and to follow Him. He says our own cross, which I mention in order to prevent the extravagance of many, who, when someone mortifies them a little, are vexed and annoyed, saying that if such or such a thing had happened to them, or what has happened to another, they would have endured it willingly, and in like manner with sicknesses, for they wish to have that which God has given to another, and not that which he has sent them himself for their good. This is not to carry our cross as our Lord wishes us to carry it, and as he has taught us by his example. If, then, we wish to carry our cross after him, we must imitate him by receiving indifferently whatever happens to us without choice or exception. Note, quote, We do not know how to love our well-beloved Savior, so we do not know how to love him. Do you require proof of it? Let us suppose that our Lord Jesus Christ had not come to suffer and to die on the earth. Would there be much change required in our mode of existence and in our ideas in order to remove that which is now conformable to his example and his doctrine? Alas, no, we, we might continue to act as we act. We should have the same aversion for suffering, the same horror of contempt. Is this, then, to love thee, my beloved Savior? No, a thousand times, no. End quote by P. de Ravignon. Back to the text. Often in spirit kiss the crosses which our Lord himself lays upon your shoulders. Do not look to see whether they are made of a precious or a perfumed wood. They better deserve the name of crosses when they are made of mean, common, worm-eaten wood. I assure you this thought is ever returning to my mind, and I know only this refrain. Undoubtedly, it is the canticle of the Lamb. It is a little sad, but it is melodious and beautiful. My Father, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Magdalene sought our Lord while holding him. She asked him of himself. She did not see him in the form in which she desired to see him. On this account she was not content to see him thus, and sought to find him otherwise. She wished to see him in his garments of glory, and not in the mean dress of a gardener. But at length she knew him, when he said, Mary. Do you see? It is our Lord in the dress of a gardener you meet with every day, here and there, in the various occasions of mortification that present themselves to you. You would much wish him to offer you other, more beautiful mortifications. O oh God, the most beautiful are not the best. Do you not think he says to you, Mary, Mary? Before you can see him in his glory, he wishes to plant in your garden a great many little flowers, small but to his liking, and this is the reason why he is so glad. May our hearts be ever united to his, and our wills to his good pleasure. Here ends the reading, and thanks be to God.